and welcome to the Young On Sports Centre where a qualifier in the 2012 AFF Suzuki Cup is about to take place. This game is being played between Brunei and Laos, both teams that have tasted a bit of success with a victory each and of course a defeat each. But we are here to talk about what's going to happen between these two sides and which of them will have a chance to get ahead. Surprise package this time in the qualifiers have been Timor Leste and of course the hosts of the qualifiers Myanmar. Left to be seen what happens today on field, but for now, let's start off with the national anthems of the respective teams. First, the national anthem of Brunei. Now we move on to the national anthem of Laos. That was the national anthem of Laos, and it'll be time now to kick forward into the action. For Brunei, Mohammed Aminuddin, Cyril Sahari, Rosman, Mohammed Khamis, Mohammed Vardun today is going to be the goalkeeper. So we've got a slight, a bit of a change there. And it does promise to be a very, very exciting game between the two sides as Brunei and Laos will have got to stay in the competition. And the only way that they can do that is with a win. For Laos, we're looking at Seng Pachan, who will be... Well, in the goal for Laos, Visay Papuanen, the usual captain, will lead the way. So a lot to expect in the game. Do stay with us as we kick forward into the action right here at the Yangon Sports Centre. The 
The Brunei team have also done fairly well for themselves. And they will have a lot to offer our respective captains, Visay Papuanin for Laos and Rosman Kamis for Brunei. Our official for today, our main official, will be Tayab Hassan Shamsuzaman. He's being assisted by Amis Ahmed of the Maldives, Anam Ahmed Saf of Yemen, and Takayama Hiroyoshi of Japan. Our main referee, though, Tayab, does come from Bangladesh. So it's a big game here today. There is a lot to expect in terms of what our lads will bring to the table. Brunei in yellow and black. Laos are playing in full white today. Brunei going in for a change of goalkeeper. Normally it's Mohamed Yusuf, Mohamed Fakrul, Zulhazmi Yusuf who sits well need the bar. Vardun Yusuf is a senior player, 10 years older. And it's into the action right here at the Yangon Sports Centre as Brunei and Laos face off. Three points and of course bragging rights up for grabs here. Well, that would have been an early start. But Bounty Son well able to collect that quite comfortably. Just a minute into the game, the side's still getting acquainted with each other and more importantly, well, with the conditions. They are used to this now. They've been playing, well, at the Yangon Sports Centre for some time. They've had training sessions and the lads are quite well acquainted with not only the surface but the atmosphere of the place as well. Brunei have got a lot to work towards. And they will have a lot to offer, especially for the football fans back home. It's been their return to the tournament. I will tell you about that later. So for all the faith that the fans have kept in them, there will be some sort of payback. And the best way to do it is with winning performances once again, the ball collected by Bounty Sun. Just pushing that forward. The Laos defenders trying to well, get ahead and movement there from Nam Tavik Sai. Free kick opportunity for Brunei. From quite a distance, it sails. Close to the last goal area. Brunei do eye an opportunity here. But well, that pass has got to be wasted. It's a bit too far for any of the Brunei strikers to get to. But all the same, just a hint of a warning, I'd say, coming from 
Brunei midfielder. Once again, Namtha Viksai. That's it to Sayabun. Sarizan, one of the star players of Brunei, shifted down to Rossman Kamas. Sarizan just tipping that back, but Laos managed to snatch possession. So things just heating up a little bit right here on field. Guilty of that tackle, so free kick granted to Brunei. Again, Laos looking to attack. We keep in mind the fact that in the last few games they did fare extremely well. Well, that's a long pass. So for the first time, Laos getting up close and personal. That'll be taken away by Adi Said. Once again, the ball falls into the Laos area. Similai to Namtavik Sai. It's down the centre. Sukapone Wong Chen Kong. Sayabun moves it to the right. Now it's Sherizan. Sherizan unable to hold on to possession but gets it back from his teammate. Sherizan. Throwing it back to his defenders. Normal chair is on back again. And Tahir brought down. Throw and taken by Kowan Namtavik Sai. That'll be a bit too far. Last coach getting a view of the game. It's been a fairly interesting time for him and the manner in which, well, he's had to go about his business. Keep in mind the fact that Kokichi Kimura is the coach of Laos and Kwon On Son, the coach of Brunei. We'll get you a bit of information on them later. They both have, well, an interesting past and Vardun takes the goal kick for Brunei. Expect a Laos attack here. The 
Ball changing feet really fast in today's game. Squad on Son. Brunei manager. Namta Viksai. Finds Hanvijay. Hanvilai. And that's going to be a free kick opportunity for Laos. Sayabun very happy. Gets it back immediately to Sukapone. That was Visai. Papua and then being brought down. He's their main star, the captain of the team. Currently 27 years old, the most experienced of the lads on field. And that's straight against the wall, and another shot, but well taken there. Bogdan Yusuf, alert to the danger. That was a straight shot and a powerful one from Ketsara Suksavan. So well taken. And Bogdan just able to save his team the blushes. It's a hard knock once again. for a chance and once again they lose possession to the Laotians it's a fairly interesting as far as the game is concerned both teams have a lot to play for today Eleven minutes have passed, and well, let me tell you a bit about the tournament itself, just in case you missed out. 2012 AFF Suzuki Cup is going to be the ninth edition of the ASEAN Football Championship. That's what it was originally called, and this is a contest to find the best footballing nation in Southeast Asia. So the ASEAN Football Championship. Well, three times over, Thailand took that crown. Three times, Singapore took it. Vietnam winning it in 2008, and the last one being won by Malaysia. Indonesia well, have just slipped up on winning it on a few occasions. They've been runners-up. They've yet to win the tournament. Well, that could be a defensive mistake, and it's collapsed wide. Or shot wide. Trying to nudge that ball home, that could have probably been Brunei's best chance, but unable to get fully in control of proceedings. Aminuddin Zakwan Tahir. So, Bounty Sun out of position. All it needed was the ball to be guided straight into the back of the net. And Sengpachan Bounty Sun will have to thank his stars for that one. for certain well, I'd say that's a stern move strong challenge there by Peng Savan Sayabun on Aswan Mohamed Saleh so he picks up the first yellow card of the game Sayabun
being Savan Sayabun well, for that tackle and a challenge on Aswan Mohamed Saleh. So just looking back at the FF Suzuki Cup, the ninth edition, the finals take place from the 24th of November right till the 22nd of December. It will be a good setup before Christmas. There have been times, and of course, the game, the final has ended just after Christmas, but this would be just in time for the holiday season. The lads themselves, the winners will definitely have a lot to celebrate at that time. But the tournament is being hosted by Malaysia and Thailand. What's very interesting is that on the 17th of December 2010, the Philippine Football Federation had declared their interest to host the tournament. However, well, things kind of well, just eased off a bit and only last year Malaysia and Thailand were announced as hosts for the preliminary round. There'll always be time, of course, for the Philippines to come back and host it again. The two main venues will be the National Stadium, that's a Bukit Jalil Stadium in Kuala Lumpur. That's in Malaysia and the Raj Mangala Stadium in Bangkok. Other venues will be the Shah Alam Stadium in Selangor and the Super Chalasai Stadium in Bangkok. Qualification will end this Saturday. And it has the five lower ranked teams in Southeast Asia playing in this round robin. The top two will qualify for the tournament. The six teams that have already qualified have been Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Laos trying to push ahead. They do know that if they do, if they can score a goal early on, it might make the difference. Slipping that back to Mohamed Zambi. Back to Aminuddin. Find Sherizan. And now Aswan. And that's put wide once again. It's not a worry for Laos for the time being. Well, just to look back at what's transpired so far in the qualifiers, keeping in mind the fact that the 13th, which is a Saturday, will be our last qualifying games. Remember, two teams will emerge from the lot that are currently playing, which are Timor-Leste, Myanmar, Brunei, Laos and Cambodia. Timor-Leste currently lead the pack with three games played. They won two games, lost a game, and they've got six points and a goal difference of plus five. But right behind them are Myanmar, who might become table toppers. And that's good defense there. Very good defense to knock the ball away. Kampeng Sayabuti. Unable to find the target. Glanced it totally wide. He had strong opposition. Very strong opposition from Mohamed Zambin. Brunei defense proving to be quite strong today. So Myanmar do have a game in hand because they've played only two games. They won both the encounters. They have a goal difference of plus two and six points in the bag. Brunei and Laos have won a game and lost a game each. So Brunei currently sit on top because their goal difference lies at zero because they've scored three and conceded three. Laos have a goal difference of minus one and that's made the difference. Cambodia pretty much look to be out of the running totally. 
after having played three games and lost all three games. All looking for a strike this time. That was Sopa Sesana. Sopa coming down the left flank with a solo effort. It's a good bit of dribbling skill that he's shown there. But the well taken by Vardun Yusuf. And the ball has already reached the other end of the field with Sengpatan Bontisan restoring it to his defenders. The last midfield now takes control. And it's off to Sukapone, Wong Chen Kam, Sukapone. Sending it back to Kampone Hanvilai. Straight down to Singh Pachan Bounty Sun. Koan Namtavik Sai. And do we have another casualty? But the referee will let that pass. Taking a knock there, Adi said. It's actually Adi Said, which is pronounced or written as Adi Said. to have a chance here now oh once again strong movement from so far Cessna but he was unable to get it past the Brunei defense they're slowly approaching the first quarter of the game you get past it there's definitely no change in the scoreline So 22 minutes and Laos now eyeing their chances well they've been taking the offensive a bit more than Brunei have been today although having said that it's Sherazan now slips it down the right will be picked up by Aminuddin Aminuddin Zakwan Tahir well slotting it down the right flank but it's a bit too far for Adi Said to get on top of it and now Bounty Sun restores it to his defenders To look at how the teams have fared so far. Let's start off with Brunei. They, they lost their opening encounter to Myanmar through a late goal scored by Yanong Win. But Laos started their opening encounter on the 7th of October with a 1 0 defeat of Cambodia. It was their main star, Papua Nin, who scored. Then Brunei went on to pull off a really exciting victory. It was a cracker of a game with Aminuddin Helmi and Aswan scoring three for Brunei and Prakmani Udom and Kimbore scoring two for Cambodia with the game finishing off 
Kimbori scoring pretty late in the game, which almost made it such a tight finish. They still had a minute more to go. And there just might have been a goal in there. The Laos went on to lose their last game on the 9th of October. And that was to Timor Leste. They lost 3 1. Once again, Papuanin did find the back of the net. Timor Leste are slowly looking one of the strongest teams in the qualifiers. It's going to be a free kick for Brunei. It could well be a goal opportunity for them as well. foot that's knocked nice and hard it's now 1-0 Brunei so 26 minutes the captain providing the joy Rosman Mohammed Kamis no answer there from Sankpachan Bhanti San Sherazan will get past Patana Sivilai. That's a good way to deflect the ball. Brunei will be intent on keeping that advantage. A corner now for Laos. And well, that was a real big warning. It may seem like a small guy, but he's got a massive foot. Talk about it, Sopa Sesana. That was a good effort there from Vardun Yusuf to save it. But the ball rising over his outstretched hands. will be desperate to set the record straight before they can move into the break. Oh, my God. 
kick for loss. We'll still look around in the Brunei goal area, but the ball's cleared by the Brunei defence. It's back to Laos aiming for a chance. So Muhammad has one. Picking up a caution. Once again, it's Cessna. Well, always attacks from the left flank. It's the third time around that Cessna's been unable to find success. Bordun standing in his way. Bounty Sun gets the ball away just in time. We pass the half hour mark right here at the Angon Sports Center. It's still Brunei with the lead. 1 0 Brunei, and that's how it currently stands. The scoreline changing on 25, but just a little after 25 minutes, with Captain Rosman Mohammed Kamis scoring for Brunei. It was an unstoppable shot with the free kick opportunity. Says Vardun Yusuf. from Mohamed Zambin to take the throw in. Zambin back again, scoops it up nice and easy. Serizan. Serizan providing the cross and that's glanced wide. A strong chance here for Brunei to get their second goal and Mohamed Najib Tarif glances it away from the goal. Struck fairly hard. There's a very good chance here. And that is not a soft goal, but a very intelligent one. As Laos now draw level. A very good move by Kowan Namtaviksai. It's now 1 0 right here at the Young On Sports Centre. Ball slotted up easy by Biang Sabon Sayabun. 
and Namtovic's side just lobs it over. Vardun unable to get to it. It's 1-0 on 33 minutes. So very smart from the last defender. Knew he had two men in yellow standing in his way. Decided to take a chance. Gently got it over the Brunei keeper. So it's game on back again here at the Young on Sports Centre. Well, looking for a second goal. Laos. And unfortunately, Sopa Sesana will trip steering his run. By himself, that is. Sorry, it's I'm not too happy. Adi Said, will he take the kick? And this time it's picked up by bon Bontisan. Sengpachan, Bontisan, alert to the danger this time round. What a strike and a fantastic stop. Well, that's a great move by Visai Popovanin. He's known for these attacks and very good effort by Vardun, just matching the effort of the Laos captain. It's now, of course, Laos trying to benefit from that corner. Cessna unable to provide to his strikers, but Laos are back in control. Brunei doing their best to snatch possession. And that's going to be another free kick for Laos. That's one, Mohamed Saleh. With the push, <laughs> that struck fairly hard, but unable to find the target from the distance this time. Well, so far, Cessna, so five efforts. He still has to hit the back of the net. Suddenly, it looked like it was going to be a tough match right from the word go, and that's something that we always knew. Remember, both the sides here need a win if they are to stay on course for making the finals of the prestigious AFF Suzuki Cup. If Myanmar win their encounter, well, they will have nine points and will get ahead of Timor Leste. But whichever is the team that wins today, and depending on goal difference, they might have a chance to tie with Timor Leste. Unfortunately, Timor, of course, have got the biggest goal difference of plus five because they've only conceded four goals, but they've scored nine goals and five of those coming against Cambodia. 
on the three against Laos. He also did score one against Myanmar. But Myanmar got the better of them. Well, that's a fairly hard knock. Slowly approaching 40 minutes right here at the Young On Sports Centre. It's been an exciting game so far. Brunei did take the lead early, and then it was earlier than Laos. Come on the back of the net. And the equaliser for Laos had another chance here. This time, Ketsada Suksawan gives the ball a gentle knock. Picked up fairly easy by the goalkeeper. Vardun Yusuf. So 14 minutes into the first half. It's just about five minutes shy. We're just five minutes shy of half time. And that's when our referee Tayyab Hassan Shamsuzaman will call it the end of play before the break. on as much as they can and they want to restore the lead that they had earlier well that coming off the woodwork so the woodwork denying Adi Saeed that could have been 2-1 Brunei It's back to Laos. Namtavik Sai moves it back to Sayabun. Got a casualty on field. It will have to be attended to immediately. Yeah, just attending to a lot to see if everything is all right. The medics. So just getting refreshed a bit. Well, slowly inching towards half time. Both coaches for the sides will be very happy. Well, this might be just what the doctor ordered. If the teams will go with the same scoreline into the break, it will just set up a very big... 
or second half for us here today. Laos also looking for their second of the night. They do know how important it is, the scoring matters. We have moved into added time right here at the Young On Sports Centre as Laos and Brunei both look to take the lead before they can move into the break. Keep in mind the fact that there is, of course, that one advantage. When you have the lead at the break, you come back refreshed and motivated, a bit more in control than the other side. Cessna unable to provide this time. But now moving up, it's Wing Saban, Saya Boon. Saya Boon moves it to the right. Laos looking dangerous, and that's a good stop by Bartun Yusuf. Brunei defense will take control this time. And there it is, half time, right here at the Yangon Sports Center. It's been a very good start for us. This is a qualifier being played with them between Brunei and Laos in the 2012 AFF Suzuki Cup proceedings. Rossman I'm scoring for Brunei and Kowan Namtavik side with the equalizer for Laos. Halftime scores Brunei 1, Laos 1. Stay with us for second half action. We will be with you all the way till the end of the game.
Welcome back to second half action at the Young On Sports Centre as Brunei and Laos resume their battle. This, of course, has been a very interesting game with the teams taking a balance into the break with a goal being scored by Brunei on 25 minutes. And that was through Rosman Mohammed Kamis, the captain, and then the reply coming later on from Visai, from Namtaviksai, Kowan Namtaviksai scoring on 35 minutes. So it was one all at the break and that's exactly how the teams will resume play right here at the Young On Sports Centre. It's a very important game for both sides. Keep in mind the fact that qualification will end on the 13th which is Saturday. It kicked off on the 5th of October. Brunei losing their first encounter to Myanmar, but making a good comeback against Cambodia on the 9th. As far as Laos are concerned, they started off with a win over Cambodia, but lost their next game to Timor-Leste. He's had a fairly tough outing today, Sankwachan Bounty son. Have to say the same for Vardhan Yusuf, the goalkeeper of Brunei as well. And it's into the second period of play with, with Laos starting off second half proceedings. out there from Adi side well he had a clear side of the goal but probably couldn't break his run but an early warning from Brunei kick opportunity for Brunei that slotted straight up but well defended by Laos Say 
once unlucky, twice. Well, that's not really luck the second time around. It was such a solid shot. Straight off the crossbar. Time for redemption. But Visay Papuanen, well, their best striker and the captain, well, puts it wide. Well, sometimes you do have, well, such a clear side of goal, but you're unable to knock it in. Bit unfortunate this time for Laos. Such a strong chance to take the lead in the game for the first time today. One thing is for certain, it's been a fair balance between the sides with the chances as well as the manner in which they've gone about with their game. We've just hit 15 minutes. It's still one all right here at the Young On Sports Centre. Well, do keep in mind the fact that it's a do or die effort because time is running out and with Myanmar and Timor Leste pretty much dominating. Well, the group, the, the table among the qualifiers, remember only the top two will go through. Three teams will be out. Cambodia have pretty much got one foot out the exit door. They haven't picked up a single point, have a goal difference of minus six. And they've lost all three games, which of course has been probably one of their well, weakest performances in the ASEAN Football Championship. Well, that's put past the right post, so not a worry there for Brunei this time. And it's Wang Savan Sayabun knocking that ball as hard as he could. Coach for Brunei. Well, Kokuchi Kimura is the coach for Laos. And Kwon On Son. Kwon On Son, the former Korean defender, the coach of Brunei. Well, that's a threat. That's not going to worry Laos. Free kick taken by Rossman Kamis. Well, just might have been able to net a brace here today. He's got a fairly decent foot when it comes to taking a free kick. But Seng Pachan Bounty San will be happy as he takes the goal kick for Laos. Bounty San, 25 years old, plays for Vientan FC. Well, most of the players do play right here, I mean, right back for their home clubs. And that's a strong collision. You've got two players down. Well, was there a collision at all? Go. And Kamis can't figure out.
Rosamund Camus is trying to figure out what went wrong there. Magic spray will go on. Well, really, an anti inflammatory or analgesic. The spray, which is known as the magic spray. A few of the things that are included in it without fail. Well, there's got to be a bit of eucalyptus a bit of menthol but most importantly methyl salicylate that happens to be the main ingredient which provides relief almost instantly although it burns like a fire has been set to your foot and that's knocked straight up into the air not really a threat but just decides to voice his intentions Sukhapone Wong Chien come Twenty years old, plays in Thailand for Krabi FC when he's not playing for the national side. There's another player who plays in Thailand, that's Ketsara Suksawan, the defender. He plays for Nongkai FC. Also Sopa Sesana and Kampeng Sayavuti both play in Thailand. For Konkai FC and Nongkai FC. That's going to be a free kick for certain. For Laos. Comfort zone, Vardun Yusuf able to clear the danger. Almost seemed like a high risk move there. Once again, Vardun Yusuf coming to the rescue of his side. So pass Essena, takes the corner for Laos. That's a good chance here, but Vardun, once again, earning his wages for Brunei.
Ross looking dangerous, but that's a good clearance. And just in time from Fendi Akup. Well, you can't say that. The referee's decision will be final and binding. Well, I have to say, it's actually a good call by the referee. Aswan Mohamed Saleh bringing down Visay Papawan in. Now, the referee just taking a bit of time to make up his mind, but it's a fairly good call, which means... It's got to be a dismal time. The Brunei lads are totally upset. Especially Rosman Kamis. But Tayyab Hassan, Shamsu Zaman, will uphold his decision. It's a chance here for Laos now to take the lead for the first time in the game. And that's straight in. It's 2-1 Laos now. A very good strike, making no mistakes, thumping Sayavuti. That's got to be retaken. What was the problem this time? So it's back to being one all. Brunei hoping that that would be disallowed, but well, that shot ruled out. So once again, here we go. Can Vardun Yusuf save it this time? It's a second chance for the Brunei keeper. And that's knocked straight in once again. Vardun moving to the left. And this time it is confirmed 2-1 as Kampeng Sayavuti knocks in the second one on 60 minutes so just past the hour mark and here we have it Laos take the lead for the first time in the game it's now Laos to Brunei 1 Brunei will start off from the middle once again Kept it fairly simple. Or the Yusuf diving to the left. And changed the direction of his shot. This time, Kampeng Sayawuti decided to go for the right hand corner of the Brunei goal. ahead at top speed and the ball screened well there so no luck for loss this time but it's still 2-1 and Brunei have a task now to get back into the game well just looking at Laos they established their football team way back in 1951 they still have to make a major appearance at an international competition They've never entered the World Cup Asian Cup or the Asian Games As an international side, they've been restricted to only the regional tournaments, of course, which is the Southeast Asian Games and the Tiger Cup, which is now known as the FF Suzuki Cup. But they've been a very resilient side coming out of their pockets not being too deep. They did make an appearance in the 1995 Southeast Asian Games. They did beat Brunei Philippines once. They also beat Malaysia. They have had their glory times. Yeah. 
He also made the second stage of the Asian qualifying for the 2006 FIFA World Cup, but went on to lose all their games against Qatar, Iran, and Jordan. That was for the 2006 FIFA World Cup. They advanced to the second round of Asian qualifying for the 2014 FIFA World Cup and actually beat Cambodia 8-6 on aggregate. But in the second round, they lost to the People's Republic of China, 13-3 on aggregate. And they do have, well, a few feathers in their cap. What a superb effort, but stopped there by Sengpachan Bounty-san. So Bounty-san, well, just keeping Laos's lead intact. And that's another stop. Once again, called into action. The Laos keeper this time denies Kamis. Coming twice to the aid of his side, Seng Pachan Bounty San. That's a pass from Sayabuti. Now it's taken away as one Saleh. Well, that's a slight. A loss of balance and they pretty much have lost possession too. Bit of a lesson there for Adi Said. And Brunei once again take it away. Said slips it to the left. Pass forward from Fendi Akup. So just looking back at the large inside, they have beaten some of the more accomplished. Southeast Asian teams like Brunei, Cambodia, Philippines, Myanmar, Singapore, and even Malaysia. Their current coach is Kokichi Kimura. He's a former Japanese footballer. He used to play for Nissan Motors all the way from 1985 to 1991 as a striker. And what's interesting is after he finished off his playing career, he spent a good bit of years well involved in other sports activities before he came back as a manager of Yokohama F Marinos. In 19 in 2008 that's a good collect by Vardhan Yusuf well Yokohama F Marinos well is basically an extension of what Nissan Motors used to be so it's definitely a team that he knew very well in terms of the team's management he's 51 years old took over the reins of managing Laos only at the start of this year was known in his day playing for Nissan Motors as a lad who had a good amount of pace and, a, and an ability to spring an attack as a surprise very often in spite of his size he's just five foot five and a half inches well his counterpart on the other side of the field is Kwon Oh Son represented the Korean Republic at the 1980 Asian Cup as a defender, he also played for Seoul City Football Club. Made 11 appearances for the Korean Republic and scored once from 1980 to 1982. Spent his whole career, club career at Seoul City Football Club. Played there for just one year, actually, 1980 to 1981. That whistle will be an offside call for Sukapone Wong Chien Kam. And it's going to be a change with Mohammed Aminuddin Zakwan Tahir being replaced by Hamizan Aziz Suleiman. So Aminuddin Sakwan Tahir is off the field. 
It's getting back to Kwon Son. Well, he did manage Seoul City Football Club in the Brunei under 21 and then got a call from the Brunei national team to take over the reins as coach. Since the start of this year, he has been managing them. Another change, Adi Saeed will come off. Aswan Mohamed Saleh comes in and Adi Saeed goes off. Sank Pachan Bhamti San. Sharizan. Knocking the ball back. Very smart pass from Cessna. Thereby, we say Papa and in. It's a fairly hard strike. With Laos unable to do much with that corner. There's a very good chance for Brunei. And what a move there! Sengpachan Bantisan stands in the way of Mohamed Sharizan's strike. So Mohamed Sharizan Saeed denied the joy here. But Brunei are still pressing for that equaliser. And what a goal! Well, that's got to be a goal, or has it been ruled out? It has been ruled out. Very unfortunate there for Mohamed Aswan, Ali Rahman. The wall side and offside. It's a very good setup from the right. And it looks like an offside call. So Villa. Billy Youth replaces Sopa Cessna for Laos. Oh, 
Gulayup Sayab Honsu Thompson for Super Cessna Cessna has had a fairly good outing today Well, slowly coming towards the end of the game would be what Laos would want here because they've got the lead Brunei are aiming hard for that equalizer we've got 16 minutes left plus let's not forget a bit of added time and that should be good enough this man has been coming close a couple of times over Mohamed Aswan Ali Rahman he's 20 years old he's got a solid Foot and an ability to strike. <laughs> Throw an opportunity <laughs> taken by Saina Konavieng Pomopanya. Sherizan with the pass and Seng Pachan Bhantisan with the collect. but he'll be back up really soon and Rossman Kamis comes off and in for Rossman Kamis we've got Otman Mohamed Noor Ikwan Otman comes in for Rossman Kamis Rossman Kamis is the captain well he did score the only goal in today's game Rosman Kamis plays for DPMM Football Club, while Mohamed Noor Ikwan Otman plays for Indira FC, just like Hamizan Suleiman, Mohamed Aswan Ali Rahman. DPMM FC, of course, currently on field. Six players on field currently from DPMM FC. Mohamed Sharizan Saeed. Mohamed Helmi Zambin, Aswan Mohamed Saleh, Mohamed Najib Tarif, Sairol Sahari, and Wardun Yusuf, the goalkeeper. It would have been seven had Adi Said still stuck around. And it would have been eight if Rosman Kamis was still there. And that's another good collect by Sengpatan Pontisan. The Laotian keeper holding strong for his side. lads are not too happy and <laughs> that's got to be a funny moment Sukapone Sukapone Wong Tien come it's another change of course so Sai Sutam comes in for Saya Wuti
Honey Pasiut Saisutam has replaced Kampeng Sayavuti. Terezan, a slick pass, but unfortunately not expecting it was Mohamed Aswan Ali Rahman. Well, I had to laugh there. There was a challenge made, of course, on Sukapone Wonchienkum, just the manner in which he jumped up and down. And well, the odd bit is you had Mohamed Sharazan just saying, Well, relax, and then the ball being handed back to him for the free kick. It's like, save yourself the drama, laddie. Well, one of those moments on field, and we've got to thank Sukapone Wong Chienkum for that. He's just 20 years old. Having said that, Mohammed Aminuddin Zakwan Tahir, the number 18, of course, has moved out. He's just 17 years old, the Brunei player. Mohammed Noor Ikwan Otman on field is just 19. Very slick pass. And that looks like it's going to be a problem as the referee has pointed to the spot once again. And this time it's also going to be a yellow card for well, that protest from Mohamed Afi Aminuddin. So definitely trouble here now for Brunei. And it's Sukhapone in one chain gum. Goes down. He's got his right hand in the bandage, by the way. But Aminuddin, Mohamed Afi Aminuddin, guilty of a foul, does get a yellow card. Well, that may have been a dive, or was it really a tackle? And that's exactly what the Brunei players are protesting. Okay, go, go, go. So Mohamed Afi gets a yellow card. It's going to be another penalty, and Mardin Yusuf. Well, might risk getting a yellow card as well. And this time... Saisom Wong makes it 3-1. So Kamlaya Saisom Wong has just made it. 3-1 loss. We slotted it towards the left-hand side of the Brunei goal. And unfortunately, Vardin Yusuf diving to the right. So Laos now firmly in control of the game. It's 82 minutes. And it definitely looks like Laos will be running away with the victory here tonight. Brunei looking to get back into this game. We've got a two goal deficit. Currently, well, 
Charizan moves away. Just keep your cool, lads. And they can't figure out why Saina Konovieng Pomopanya is down. So another free kick for Laos. The last two goals coming from penalties. Brunei fighting back. Well, they know that's what they'll have to do. With five minutes left in this game, plus maybe a bit of added time for stoppages, this pretty much is a game that is swinging in favor of Laos here. out Sharazan well, just jammed in between there just gonna go with the Brunei national football team known originally as the Brunei Dar es Salaam national football team they're nicknamed Tebowan which means the wasps which is why the yellow and the black. They are controlled by the National Football Association of Brunei Dar es Salaam. They were founded in 1959, a bit after Laos, but joined FIFA in 1969. They've also frequently featured in the Malaysian Premier League as one of the state sides. In 1993, the word amateur was dropped because that's what they were originally called when they were formed the Brunei State Football Amateur Association. They've taken part in the Southeast Asian Games and the Tiger Cup, which is now the AFF Suzuki Cup, the one that you and me are enjoying the thrills of. They made only one appearance in the 1976 Asian Cup and entered World Cup qualifying only once in 1986. Both occasions they were eliminated in the first round. Today there are approximately 2,500 footballers playing with Brunei's 22 registered clubs. Footballers are amateurs or semi-professionals, but several nat naturalized citizens have been included in the team. And the current national team has a few foreign citizens. Some of course who have mixed lineage. Well, that's a smart move and a great collect by Vardun Yusuf. But just splitting the Brunei defense, the Laosian strikers. That's knocked away by the Brunei defense. Well, in past national players like Hamid Alin Birko had Ukrainian blood. Darul Yuriri, Russian, half Russian, and Boris Nafal, that half Serbian lineage. They did go to a bit of a dark patch. When the Football Association of Brunei Dar es Salaam was 
suspended due to well, certain irregularities and not meeting well, certain guidelines laid out by FIFA. In 2010, well, nothing much had been done. And finally, on the 31st of May 2011, Brunei were reinstated back into the FIFA fold, which is a really, really heartwarming bit to look at them playing back again in the Southeast Asian contest, the biggest one in Southeast Asia on the ASEAN region. And that's a fairly good start for them. So the fans are delighted. The Brunei footballers have something to look forward to. But today, it will be Laos who will be doing all the celebrating because the winner for Laos will take them up the order. They will have six points and a goal difference of plus one. They will sit just behind Timor Leste or Myanmar in third position depending on what the outcome of Myanmar's game is. We will come to know. Three minutes of added time is what we have. We pretty much touched full time here. Three minutes of added time is all that we have in this game. And that's the only lease of life that Brunei will get. If they want to come away with a draw and salvage a point, it's just three minutes left and two goals for the asking. That's a wasted chance. Sengpatan Bhantisan will not be worried by that. for certain <laughs> Mohammed Najib Tarif picking up a yellow card for bringing down Patana Sibilai free kick for loss but nothing will come of that well, the seconds are ticking away and Brunei are staring now at a potential defeat. This will be their second defeat in the tournament or in the qualifying for the tournament. For Laos, it will be their second win in three games. And probably their biggest because the last game against, the last win was against Cambodia. It was a 1-0 finish. Then they lost 3-1 to Timor Leste, but they will finish off probably with a 3-1 scoreline here today. And that can't be! Well, it is the third time around that the referee... Pulled out a card, but this time it's for a dive, so no penalty. Cyril well, gets the benefit of the doubt, and that's a good call. It was definitely a dive. And this time it's a tackle on Sherazan. So just pushing. Well, I'd say the barrier are pushing too hard were the Laotians looking for another penalty opportunity and that's why Cyril just fell over there in surprise 
And there it is, full time right here at the Angon Sports Centre as Laos win this qualifier against Brunei. It's been a really good outing for Laos. Goal scored by Kuan Nam Tavik Sai, Kampeng Sayavuti and Kanlaya Seom, Seom Samsung Wang. The consolation of Brunei scored by Rossman Kamas. So final score, it's Brunei 1, Laos 3 or 3-1 three Laos as Laos now pull off their second victory in the qualifiers. Thank you so much for sharing the action of this game with us. Well, do have an excellent evening. And from all of us here at the Yangon Sports Centre, it's time to say goodbye and goodnight.